Well, it's been some time since I posted, and it's been quite a bit of time since I posted an art critique. So I think it's time for another one. Today we're going to be working with the She-Hulk. There are some things going on in this that are uh, really good. I think when the person was drawing, when they sat down to, to capture the likeness, a lot of things are, are pretty pretty much in the right place. There's a few atomical things we'll get to, but overall uh, the piece is looking really good. And when we move in to uh, the colors that we're using, we are doing that hue shift from a more bluish green to a more yellowish green to do the highlights. Green is a weird skin tone to work with because our skin is pink because there's blood, which is red underneath the skin. So it's really interesting to have a green character because how do you deal with the changes in saturation that are in human skin? So it's, it's interesting idea of what other skin colors outside of the normal range of brownie peachy colors is. So a few things I would correct. Start, I would take the black background and I would make it a medium gray. If you're going to be using black as a background, you're not going to be able see, to see the values correctly. They're going to be slightly skewed because the background is darker. So when I'm working with something, I usually start with a gray background, kind of a medium gray, so that I can see things more accurately. The next thing I would do, I think one of the biggest things is going to be getting more accurate values. So what I've done is taken a layer, filled it in with black, uh, solid, and then instead of normal, I changed it to saturation, which turns everything into grayscale. So when we see this, there's not a big jump from her darkest dark to her light. It's staying pretty much in the mid-tone, and I think we can bring it a bit darker. We can add that glossy highlight that skin has, and I think we can get her costume a bit more accurate as well. As far as anatomy goes, the, the one thing I'm going to start with are these, the, the love handles. Right in here. Yes, there's a little bit of extra flesh on the hips, but it's not quite that much. Uh, they're much less obvious. So with the value, with her skin tone, I would take that green a bit deeper and move it towards blue. And then around the edges and anywhere there's going to be that deepest shadow, I'm going to go in with that. So between her legs, uh, you have the torso above it. So down here is going to get the most shadow around the edges is going to get just a bit and then her arms are going to have just a little bit more shadow and underneath where her hair is as we move in underneath her chin is going to have a bit more And then with a softer brush, I'm going to blend that. The body, the, the arms and legs are cylinders. And so they're going to have a radial shading where it goes from light to dark and it's going to be overall fairly smooth. However, because the She-Hulk is very strong and because uh, a lot of superhero characters are very strong, they're going to have more definition. It's going to be defining the muscles. So I, I know that in there, there's going to be a bit of shadow. 
I'm not great with what all the muscle names are, but I do know where the muscles should be. And it may be beneficial to go in and look up uh, muscle diagrams that you would see as a, a student doing anatomy and physiology. The issue I think that you're coming across is that you're not using a wide enough range of value to really define the form. You know that some stuff, some areas should be lighter, some areas should be darker. However, you're not exactly sure where those dark moments are, where the light moments are, and how to define the muscles. So in her arm, between this muscle and this muscle, I'm going to use less value than defining this area of her arm compared to around where her armpit is. And then since her, her, the light appears to be coming from above or in front of her, her shoulder is going to be a little bit lighter as well. This shoulder will have more darkness to it because her hair is casting a shadow. And I can see that you have a difference in value in her outfit. However, once again, the, the difference in that value is not quite strong enough. So here we're getting more of a value range than in the original. And having that gray is giving me a better background to see those values rather than black where everything's going to seem too bright. So with her outfit, I'm going to take that purple, we move it to blue, and I'm going to make it darker. She has some wrinkles going on. I guess fabric does wrinkle on the body. Again, as we're moving around her hips into the pelvis area, it's going to be in shadow. I'm going to bring that highlight up in the white. White is a weird color because everywhere else you're moving the hue. You're changing from a bluish purple to a pinkish purple, but with white, something similar also happens. It's, it's rarely ever just white or just gray. So I'm going to move into blue. I'm going to provide more definition of the form, which is what value is for. Value defines the form. As the form moves away from light, it gets darker. As it moves into the light, it gets lighter. With a form-fitting outfit, something that happens, we, we want female heroes to be sexy and to have that space in between their breasts. But generally, if you have something very tight, you're going to have wrinkles going this way and not the defined cleavage. And I'm going back and forth between a hard round brush and a soft brush, depending on what I need. To block in the first colors, I'm definitely going to be using a harder brush. And then to blend them out, I'm going to be using a softer brush. And then here with the highlight, I'm going to bring it up a little bit. Because again, if her light's going this way, the top of her breast is going to be what, what catches the light, not necessarily the front of the breast. So I'm going to bring this shadow up just a little bit. I'm going to define the space there. And then with these highlights, I'm going to go brighter to give the illusion that she's wearing uh, something a little bit shinier. 
something closer to the comic books. And blend those out just a bit. So now we have more definition in her outfit. We increased the value. We went in darker underneath the breast. And we went lighter where the highlights are. I would also do that to uh, where her wrists are. We have, again, a cylinder coming down. So there's going to be some shadow in these areas on the overall form of her hand. And then highlights on top as it comes down in the middle. And then as there are wrinkles, that's where we would see highlights this way. And as the form moves, as there are wrinkles in the fabric, that's where we're going to start getting more of our darker colors. Eh, that's a little too dark. Right, so we have a wider range of value. We're not just seeing uh, two colors, we're seeing four or five or six different colors, defining the overall form and then defining the smaller forms like the wrinkles. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is move in on her face. When you are this zoomed out on a piece, you do not need to do individual hair strands and you do not need to do individual eyelashes because zoomed out, we won't see it. You wanna look for the overall shape. In her face and in her hair, there's a lot of line dependence, meaning that you're using lines to define the form instead of value. So if we come in with our green and go a little bit darker, I'm going to define her neck a little bit. We can better define her nose. This might be our nostrils. There's our shadow. The nose also cast a shadow. There's the inside of the eye underneath where her hair goes. We'll also have a shadow. And then we'll start moving some of these. So by using our highlights and shadows in the right places, we can define features on her face. Her brow bone, her forehead, her nose, all can be better defined uh, by using stronger values. Of course, I'm going in and just making adjustments. This isn't meant to be perfect. This is meant to be a demonstration. With her lips, uh, with lips, the top lip generally faces downward. So it's going to be darker. You're going to get that bit of shadow into the mouth. And then the bottom lip is where we're going to have that that highlight the the lines in the lip you're only going to see those if you are very very close for a partial body or even if you're just doing the the bust you're not going to notice the individual lines on the lip go in here and lighten this just a bit That. And that gives us a better, more well-defined lip. Anytime you're going down to a, a single pixel uh, within a piece, you're probably not going to notice it in the overall uh, larger piece. I try not to stay this zoomed in as much as I can possibly help it. There we 
go in and redefine the nose. I'm going to blend the side of that nostril a little bit more. And then because the skin has oil, it has that little bit of reflection. And the nose, the cheeks, this is what's going to catch it. Give it a bit of a blend. And that's going to better define the face than going in with individual single pixel lines. And then for her lashes with a hard brush, Right, we're going to see the overall lash shape much more than we're going to see the individual lashes. And then it similarly applies to the hair, and much like the other the the rest of the piece, um, it's a issue of value. So the hair is very reflective, especially if it's shiny. So we're going to put some shine in. She has a, a curly wavy hair, so it's going to catch the, the light at different points. We're going to kind of go in with a bit of that mid-tone. And we're going to follow the form of the hair. Making sure it goes over the shoulder. Brushes that, that simulate hair are kind of tricky. For doing this zoomed out of a, a portrait, for doing a half body, I probably wouldn't even bother with a hairbrush. I'm just going in with a, a hard round brush and putting in the overall shine and, and shape of the hair. I'm not worried about those individual hair textures because from a distance, they're not going to show. Again, I'm going to go in with that blue. And this is to add a little bit of shadow as the collar goes around to behind her hair. In review, I took the black background and made it gray so I can more accurately look at the values in the piece. I have a layer that is filled in black set to saturation that's going to show me the difference in value without having to toggle uh, turn to grayscale and back again. So with that gray background, I'm able to see the values more clearly. And with the additional saturation layer, I'm able to see more clearly. I went darker under the breast uh, in the, the pelvic region because it's going to get more shadow. I took the skin down in darkness and also added a little bit more highlight. You were getting good mid-tones, but you were missing the darker shadows and a little bit of that highlight. If I were going to if I were going to continue working on the piece, I would continue to add highlight like on her shoulder and uh, through some of her muscles to give them more detail. I would go in and correct some of the shading on the hands. I think you did a great job capturing overall the fingers. However, this finger back here wouldn't capture that much highlight that far back. I went in on the face and gave more value difference to better, better define the features. And I went in and added a highlight on her hair to better capture the form of the hair. Overall, I think you have a really good start. I think you have a good start to understanding anatomy. Not, not that I have like the perfect understanding. I still have to use references 
and if I were to go into more detail, I would have to look up more muscle references in order to get her arms more accurate, her legs more accurate. Uh, the bump right here, more accurate if you're standing with weight on one leg. So all that being said, uh, good job. I hope this helps. If it does, uh, consider giving a like, a subscribe. I hope to be making more of these in the near future. And uh, yeah, have a good one.